next to you is the black belt of the group. I'm going to turn to you to bring our lesson to a close. Good morning. No, uh, <laughs> please, my name is Roderick Stewart. Um, but please call me Stu. Or, like, I've been given a name, Sensei Stu. Yeah, they call me that. <laughs> She's waving. Anyway, so I'm here to, um, to cover what's called a lean management system. And what I do at Facade Health is I create um, a lean management system. It's more than just the tools. I can show you a bunch of tools. This is the main focus of what, of what I do and what I think most lean Six Sigma theory constraints type programs should be about is the creation of that culture that allows the people or the management system to add value for their customers. Now, the customers doesn't just mean the external customers, it also means your internal customers to include your people. So training is very important, but how do you do that training um, is even more important. And I use a, a, a certain now system punch. that I'll talk punch. about in a second. Good. What's the matter, you some kind of girl or something? Punch, drive a punch, not just arm, whole body. Keep leg, drive a punch, make key eye. Pure, pure, give you power. So try punch, good. Pure. I'm not going to recreate this here our sound, not today. Uh, what I would, I would talk to, about the structure uh, of an organization. All organizations have teams. All of us have structures in our different things. Some of them have one follower, and many leaders, many leaders, one follower, and many followers, no leaders. But this is exactly what you don't want in your organization. I don't know if you guys can see that. It says management is up top and employees on the bottom. And it rolls downhill. Don't ask me what the it is, but it rolls downhill. Another way to show it is, is like this. You have the manager, CEO, or C-suite type person on top. What the? Yeah, up top, thank you. Doing it to me too. And, and it rolls down here. You get the picture, right? A lean management system is not about this. It's about development of the people to show respect for the people. If a person was hired at a certain level, I don't care if it's at the bottom level or not, they're hired for their technical expertise at that level. L allow them to do that job. So a lean management system <laughs> helps align those things. So here's some key elements of the lean management system. First is a daily engagement system, which, is, which uh, some components I put up there, leader standard work, standard calendar, a tier checking system, huddles, and for frontline problem solving. Again, if you're a C-suite person or a director that's never been, um, let's say a machinist as an example, you've never been a machinist, but you're over machinist, who are you to tell a machinist how to do their job? Aren't they the experts? That's why we hired them, right? So a lean management system allows their expertise to be used and utilized for process improvement. Next one is the effective uh, visual management practices. All your visual management should, should be able to show, um, what, should be able to show your target performance versus your actual performance, which equals your gap. And all your process improvement initiatives should be around your organizational gaps. All right? What a five by five rule means is from five feet away, within five seconds, you should be able to tell whether it's performing to standard or not. Green, yes, we're good. Red, we're not good. I don't preach a yellow or purple, none of those other colors, all right? You're doing it or you're not doing it. If you're not doing it, what can we do about it to get it back on point? Next is focus, continuous process improvements. Again, once you identify the gaps, work on them. It is that simple. Strategy deployment, is some, some of you may know it as a Hoshin Connery. Uh, Hoshin Connery is strategy development as well as the deployment of that strategy, and I'll show you in the next slide how to do that. One, the, just a framework, because we only have 10 minutes up here, and Rami keeps you know, sh showing me them, you that time. You got 10 minutes? I, I got 10 minutes. I don't know about you. I did about right, 15. So, <laughs> I, always, I would always say for any organization, you start at the top with strategy. The organizational leaders are responsible for setting the strategy for the organization, period. I, I don't see it any, any other way. So one tool to use is called an X matrix. I didn't put an example here. It's a big Excel form. But it's used to show the key performance indicators, the objectives, and the metrics from the organizational standpoint. Then you go down to strategic government, governance. You use what's called a production board. It's a, all these are visual management tools that you can look at and say, are we doing good or are we not doing good? And then what are you doing about it? So you use these things to make the daily or weekly strategic um, uh, priorities known, not just to the executives, but everyone in the organization. So your, your decision making is based on those, that production board, which links to the X matrix or your strategy. The next one is cascade and communicate. All the goals from the key performance indicators, let's say you have a, a three-tier system, meaning executives, directors, and frontline staff. So 
the executives are responsible for the strategy. The next line is the directors. The directors, for example, would have the pr production board, how they're making that strategy a reality, kind of the general direction. And then the, the bottom tier, so to speak, the frontline staff will give you the actual how the work to be done to make those things uh, come alive. So that's what Cascade and Communicate uh, means. The way you do all these things is that the bottom process integration is integrating Lean, Six Sigma, Theory of Constraints, the next slide, uh, into everything that you do. So as a frontline staff member, what uh, my performance review should be based on the metrics. I should be fo focused on the same thing in alignment with my director, director to executive, and so forth and so on. So that's what this is about. So <clears throat> I'm going to go through everything on this slide, but the top line in blue is strategic management, again, setting the general direction of principles. Um, and I'll show you if I can come up this piece right here. Can you see this? All right, good. So here is the metrics or the gap in your performance. Again, your actual versus your targeted. And it goes down, so the executives are responsible for, for that level, the strategic level, to develop the strategy and the vision for the organization. They pass that down to, again, let's say directors in, in this example. The management team or director team takes those opportunities and targets and actually do something about it. The way they do something about it, they, they get a working team together, functional experts at whatever you, you know, you're discussing, and you do Kaizen events, you do projects, just do it. And you come out with a lot of mapping, value stream mapping, analysis, root causes, and countermeasures. Those countermeasures are then put into action plans, and those action plans have metrics or measurements, and those measurements or metrics lead up to the gap or the constraint that the executives originally kind of pointed out. So all these people are doing all the correct work to make your organizational vision become reality. So tier reporting and the communication structure. Most organizations have what I call a top-down directive style of leadership where I tell you what to do. This is not a promotion of that type of, uh, of structure. The goal here is, should be to develop your people so they can do the job. And we were talking, Mark and I was talking about on the break that, you know, usually when a COO or CEO leads the organization that um, a lot of the culture goes with that person. And I disagree. If the culture is embedded in the organization, I'm going to not say who cares when the CEO leaves, no. But if they leave, the next person comes in should be embedded in the culture of the organization. This management culture is what we're promoting in the lean management system. So this is a few tiers of CEO or CEO at that tier, kind of coaching and responsible for the coaching of the executive sponsor, the executive sponsor to directors, director to process owner, down to the frontline staff. All of this communication happens from the CEO who is responsible for the professional development of the executive sponsor so forth and so on, down the scale. Process owners responsible directly for the frontline professional development. That is alignment. These slides gotta catch up with me. All right, at each of these levels, so for say the frontline and process owner, the process owner is responsible for barrier removal and anything that that frontline staff needs, that's that process owner's responsibility. Directors responsible for the process owner, and so forth and so on, all the way up the chain of command, so to speak, to the CEO level. This is unresolved issues get escalated from the front line all the way up the chain. At each of these levels, problem solving happens. We talk about the Kata methodology, we use it immensely. Kata becomes your standard work on how you challenge people versus being directive. Do it like this. It's more of a question. How do you see it done? What, what problem are you trying to solve for? What can I do as a leader to help you solve your problems? And again, we have leader standard work developed for each of these tiers. This is an example of a production board or a visual management tiered board. There's a lot of components on here, but each of, at each level, the board functions a little bit different, but that's where I come in. Coaching, how to use these boards, how to use visual management, so forth. So in 10 minutes or less, yes. th thank you. <laughs> in 10 minutes <laughs> or less, I give you a brief overview of what a lean management system. And just like Mark said in the beginning, I know you, you probably, I hope you have a lot more questions than I first started up here, because if you didn't, that means I covered everything. And I know I didn't. Anyway, thank you for the time. <laughs> Stu, thank you. Awesome. Way to bring it home. <laughs> Very good. Mark, can I get you to click one more? Let's take a quick look at some key takeaways. From Mark, to improve is to change. To pursue perfection is to change often. In order to change often, you have to find the right tools, approach, and practice. And make mastering and teaching your habit. 
from Dan, an agile method for process improvement provides greater team involvement and rapid visibility in chunks throughout to add value for involved stakeholders. And from Roderick, a lean management system is about culture and the creation of that culture that allows the management system to have value for its customers. Now, it's your turn. We went fast, you got bits and pieces of information. The information that was presented here and the PowerPoint will be available to you afterwards. So we have time for a couple of questions for those of you who may have questions for our panel members. The mic is on and ready if you wanna come up to the microphone. We'd welcome your, we'd welcome your questions. Well, just yell them out, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, there was some over there. Thank you for okay. questions. <laughs> Thank you very much everyone for your presentation. Uh, I have a quick question um, for Mark. Mark, what is the kata element needed in an agile process? Hmm, that's um <laughs> So when you refer to agile, if you look at it from the, the, the pure value principle perspective, are you thinking of it as, as a project management tool, which is an interpretation of the values and principles into a set of framework to get something done? Yeah, so from a project management perspective, when we say kata is yes. an element of an agile. Okay, thank you. Exactly. So, you know, that, that's, when you're, that's when your team's scrumming. You know, the kata element, that, that iteration, that, that um, uh, you know, every day, the routine that you, you do your stand-up, that you have the conversation about, um, you know, what did I do yesterday, what am I going to do today, and what are my impediments, you know, that mirrors an awful lot of what the routine is that you do inside um, your daily scrum, which is a part of the sprint. And so that's a kata, you know, from that perspective. So good that's, question. That's what I was describing as it's becoming institutionalized now in those techniques, at least the state is moving towards that, is to standardize how that's done from a process standpoint. And what I was saying for OCM practitioners, it's, the, it's nothing more than the OCM cycle on a tiered basis is what you're having to deal with. You had a so question? I do have a question, but I think everyone needs another question. That is, what is Scrum? I don't think I ever oh. heard it defined <laughs> anywhere. I'm sorry. Go ahead, you want to? Sure. I, I do have another question behind that. Sure. A, a Scrum is basically an activity. Like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to execute uh, a process improvement on how to terminate a service, OK? So that, that's something you're gonna, it's called a user story. I'm, I'm trying not to get technical. But a scrum is involved, you get the people, the stakeholders, the developers, the trainers, the OCM people, everybody that needs to be involved. And a scrum master holds a session where he describes, where you go through, okay, well, what do we wanna do here? How does it work currently? How do we wanna improve it? It's, it's the whole process that you go through. It's a, it's, think of rugby with a scrum where you're, you've got uh, the rugby ball and you're working as a team and you're trying to move, move it forward. That's, it's just a term that they've adopted. Talking like it literally, like a scrimmage? It, yeah. literally, it literally is when you scrum the ball in rugby, you know, your, your team is together, working together as a unit, moving the ball down the field towards right. the end goal and they're doing it in iterative form. And so it, that's a scrum. And so it, it comes from the rugby language. Okay, yeah. thank you. That, yeah. That's very helpful. Um, I'm a Green Belt for Lean Six Sigma. So I'm very curious to find out for process improvement why we would choose to use an Agile or a, a Scrum versus Lean Six Sigma. Why would we choose one over the other? <laughs> you may answer. Go ahead. Go first. All right. You wouldn't. It doesn't matter for me what necessarily uh, the tool you use to gain the, you know, to, to reach the organizational vision. Agile, Scrum, Lean, Six Segment Theory Constraints, those are, those are sets of tools to use, but I promote the whole system. If you design a system, then you can pick from any Agile, any Scrum, any Lean, Six Sigma tools to help you reach your, your goal. So it's just a, a certain set of tools. That's it. 
Yeah, I agree. So Lean Six Sigma typically uses the NMAIC model, but inside that, you know, you use a Plan Do Check Act, but you can, you know, depending on the the epicness of you know the project, or you know, is it something you just do it? You know, or do you want to run it through a you know, two to three month demand? And so that's another way too, just kind of scaling how long the work effort's going to be. Because you could simply, again, just do it. Maybe it's a little bit larger and you do a plan, do, check, act, kind of just one iteration. Um, or you run it through a demand model, but there are tools. So the way I like to look at it is you, you, you know, the more tools you learn, you, know, you want to master a few of them, you lay them out on the table and you kind of pick and choose what makes sense for what you're trying to achieve. And these tools are very flexible. Like, you know, Dan was talking about just, you know, for the agile. Agile is intended to be super flexible. Right. It should flex and adapt to the team, not the, not the organization or, you know, the way that um, an institution is trying to create, um, you know, a framework around it. So. I think we have time for one more question, and then we need to wrap up for the next group of speakers. Okay. Um, yes, thank you. I just have a question. I, was, I, I really like the concept of lean management, using that in a management strategy as you're developing pro or processing assignments. Um, with you using this, uh, Roderick, with Sutter Health, have you seen, how long have you seen the change, the culture change within that organization? Because with state government especially, um, some things are just so institutionalized, you try to impro uh, implement new ideals and it still just stays the same. Yeah, remember the introduction, I'm a retired military. I hear you. <laughs> it takes a long time. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not a proponent of dragging out projects for months on end. Uh, most of projects don't need that. I'm a proponent of a slow, gradual, what he, what he referred to as PDCA cycles, plan, do, check, act. You do something, take action, plan it, you do it, you check and act it, learn something from it, and then do another iteration or another scrum. We just had a PDCA cycle. It's continuous process improvement. That's why we, we named it that. But you have to do something first. A lot of tools are a lot about planning, planning, planning. And when do you ever get to execution in the government? I think you're still waiting on that, right? <laughs> so it's about doing something, taking action now, learning from it, um, which, let's say, improves your organizational effectiveness. May not, may not get you to your goal completely, but you, you've learned something. And then what do you do? You PDCA or do another scrum, another cycle, learn a little bit more. So you'll be better off in, let's say, two months than you were um, versus a long project plan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us for this session. We hope that you're walking away with some valuable takeaways. The information from this session will be posted on the PSP website, so you will have access to it after the session. Thank you again. Thank you.